because we've been working, it's been raining, it's been crazy. But this is what we've got so far on this side. So this right here is not a it's not a toolbox, it's just a box that contains the spare tire. And in order to get the spare tire out, I'm gonna have something that covers this little area. You just remove that, take your nuts off, and the tire comes right out. We also have a toolbox that's gonna be here. I'll show it to you, it's on the inside. Also have the little lights in. And we got this box built. And this is the box that goes in the back on the passenger side right here. And that's what it looks like on the inside. I'm gonna be putting the POR 15 over everything. That way I don't have to have it sandblasted and primed and painted. Uh, I did prime all the little corners where I polished it with the sander to get the edges smooth and all that. I didn't want to put it on bare metal, so I put some primer on that. I just got to paint that and bolt it up. 
and I'll show you. So the part that's gonna seal it, it's gonna fit on the back side of this. And when you shut the door, it seals against it and it's gonna have like a little shaft that goes through here, just like the other box. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the inside where the door closes. It seals up against this. And I'm gonna be using the sticky back foam all the way around it. That way when the door shuts, it presses against that. It just has an opening where you put the lock on right there. I had to do it in two pieces. So it's actually gonna look like this. And bolt, bolt in. I had to do it two pieces like this so I could fit through the opening to bolt it up. And I'll show you what that looks like out there. So this is what this box looks like here. I'm using these type of locks to where it just opens and closes. And because I don't have any foam on this part right here, this part's not installed pushing out on the door. You know, I use this magnet to grab it, to pull it out because it doesn't have, you know, pressure. As you can see, I also don't have the backing on it because this has to go in from the back first and I need to install it but I was waiting to paint everything first. But that's basically what it's, what it's looking like so far. And probably also gonna be putting some sticky back foam on this because I didn't think about it, but I don't want that going jingling down the road. So I'm gonna be putting a sticky back in the back of that lock just so it doesn't rattle so much still have to you know make the fender and make the box for that but just giving a little update so i wanted to add a chain to this to keep this level whenever it's open not really you know to handle any kind of weight but in case i want to set like a, a jug or, or a bucket or something on here it'll at least do that I don't, that way it, it doesn't fall all the way to the ground and the chain's adjustable i just welded a bolt to it pretty cool so I added the chain that's done also did a piece of angle iron and I drilled my holes through here and basically welded the nuts on the back side where all I had to do is put the bolt through it that way I don't need to have a wrench on the back side but I went ahead and put a piece of flat bar here to where you can make that same kind of contour like the other side. And now I just got to put a piece of sheet metal going there and fasten it some kind of way. And that part will be done. Alright, so it's the next day. Got this piece mounted in place. It's not perfect. It's got a few little flaws in it, but I'm happy with it. That's what that looks like. And it's held on by one bolt there, and one there, and one there. And basically it's just for aesthetics. Doesn't really have a purpose, just to match the other side. Kind of close off this little area. I probably could have built the box like that and get a little bit more room. But I didn't go that route. Maybe next time. Alright, so I wanted to kind of document how I did the fenders here. Uh, so I bought these fenders at Tractor Supply and they, I forget how wide they are, I want to say probably like 9 inches wide, which is not quite wide enough for my one ton truck, the, the tires that's on it. And so what I did is I cut them in half and then I extended it to the length I needed it to be. And these fenders have a, a curved side on one side and a flat you know so i chose the flat side for my 22 pickup truck and for the 71 truck that we have i'm going to use the round ones so i bought two fenders cut them in half i'm use the round ones for the old truck and the straight ones for the new truck and this is that mat that i'm using for the inside of the fender it's real thick durable and I did it already on the other fender I'll show you. I uh, just bolted it all along here and extended it to where I want it to be. I also cut 
cut me some little pieces of metal the same thickness as this. Went in 11 inches. That way I'll have something to bolt the, the rubber to. So I gotta go ahead and weld this in place. One here and one up there. Here's the other piece. So it's like two and a half inches extension on the bottom of each side. And it goes in 11 inches. So I'll show you what it looks like on the outside. All right, so that's what the fender is gonna look like basically. You can see the little extension, two and a half inch extension there. It meets the box, kind of tapers in and it bolts to this section here. It also has a lag bolt going directly up into the wood right here, hole in the center. And basically just have this bracketry going up together. This is just temporary because the box is gonna bolt up to this plate here and also to here. So that's just temporary to hold the fender secure. Uh, this is just galvanized metal that you, you know, angle iron. But this is that rubber that I was talking about that extends the fender to the right distance that I need. And it's working just fine. All right, so this is what it looks like with the, the foam backing going around here. I don't have the pieces bolted in, so I'm not gonna shut the door, it'll fall on me. But basically, they bolt up right there on the corners. And when the door shuts, the foam backing seals it. At least that's the idea. So again, this is the piece for the other box. I'm putting the foam tape all the way around it. It's about eighth inch thick. So that's it mounted up temporarily. It just has the lag bolt in the middle, but just to kind of get a look of what it looks like. So, and like I said, I still have to put the rubber mat. All right, guys, so I think I came up with a plan to attach this part to the box. I just took some leftover metal, same thickness as this, and just basically kind of made some angle iron, only not at a 90 degree. And basically gonna weld that to the fender right there, probably actually like right here. And then I'll drill me a hole at the end right here to bolt to the bottom of the box. And I'll have one here and one at the end of the metal down here and bolt up to the box. All right, so I made a little mark on where these are supposed to be, right there and one right there. So I went ahead and just put my pliers on that, clamp that down, I'm gonna go ahead and weld that on. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Alright guys, so that worked out real good. It is super solid. Uh, I mean, you, it shakes the whole truck. It's solid. And all I did was shoot a couple of self-tappers in to get my holes where I need them to be. I'm going to pull those out and put me some bolts and nuts through there. I'm happy with that. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to work on is this little triangular piece right here where it meets the fender in the box. So I gotta go ahead and make a pattern and see what I can come up with. All right, I got a sheet of 3 16ths here for that little piece. And I'm gonna have to probably be cutting it right here. You know, that kind of shape, but I don't know the exact shape. So I got a, some more of that rubber that I used earlier. And in order that I have a handle where I can, you know, test fit it, cut, trim it, you know, test fit it, trim it. It would be kind of hard to hold in place because it's kind of flimsy and it doesn't have anything to hold on to. So I just put a piece of this galvanized angle, bolted through it. That way, you know, I'll have something to hold on to while I'm tracing it and cutting and trimming. All right, guys, let's see what it looks like. Like I said, this little handle came in handy. So it's pretty dang good. The only problem is this needs to about an eighth of an inch off of it. So luckily I got these lines to go by. So I'm just gonna follow along here and cut an eighth inch off and it should fit just fine. 
I'd say that's a pretty good fit right there. Good pattern. I just got it sitting there. <laughs> Looks good. Alright, so I went ahead and took my pattern and transferred my line over to my piece of metal. Go ahead and I'm going to use my grinder first and just kind of scribe it about three or four times, you know, just to kind of make a groove. And that way it's not so thick, but I'm going to use a jigsaw with a metal blade to cut it. And usually once you, you know, use the grinder and get it thinner, it cuts right through it pretty easy. So it's a lot easier than going all the way through with this. All right, like I said earlier, I took my grinder and I scribed it about three or four times real lightly. And I basically just started on this end, holding it with two hands real, and just letting the grinder do the work. Don't, you know, don't push on it. Scribe it a few times. Now I'm going to use my jigsaw. I said 3 16ths earlier, but this is actually 8th inch. All right, so I got it pretty close, as you can see. Touching right here and about a quarter of an inch gap, maybe an eighth inch gap right here. So I'm going to just go ahead and draw me a line along here, sand it down and get it to fit perfect. All right, y'all. So we got it to fit pretty good. I think once everything is painted black, with the gap that you see there, you won't even notice that. I think it's going to look real nice. So now I gotta figure out how to attach that piece to the fender and the box or just maybe the box. I might just weld it to a piece of angle iron and bolt it to the box. Alright guys, so I went ahead and bolted up a piece of bracket angle iron right here. And as you can see it fits nicely. I made me a little mark on where I'm gonna attach it to this little triangle piece. So I'm gonna unbolt this and weld it to this. All right, so what I'm doing here is I uh, screwed this little bracket that I just showed you a while ago to the thing and I got my bolt, my same bolts that were bolted through the box and I'm just gonna go ahead and tack weld them in place. That way I don't have to hold that side if I ever wanna pull it off. Okay, I got those bolts welded on. I went ahead and put some nuts on here because I want to cut these bolts shorter because I don't need an inch or two poking into the box. So I'm going to cut them short with the grinder here, but that's going to booger up the ends a little bit and it's going to make it hard for that nut to screw on. So I'm going to cut it first and then I'm going to unscrew it. That way it'll work the thread the way it's supposed to be. All right, so I went ahead and cut the bolts. And that's off. Got to get the nut out of here, but you see the point? Clean, nice clean edge. All right, guys, so I went ahead and tacked that in. Just three tacks. I think that's all it needs. It's pretty solid. And that's what that looks like. I'm going to try to get this on camera, doing this with one hand. put the camera down all right there we go so that's where the bolts are going through I've got a little bit of play in it so I can adjust it to get it just right like right here you know get it nice and flush let's see what that looks like bolted up Got it all bolted up. Right now. Looks pretty good. It's still touching a little bit on that top corner. I'm gonna have to sand that a little bit more when I take it back apart before I paint it. But overall, pretty good. Not bad. So I was looking at this and I could actually use these. I don't have to use a lock on it all the time. I just put this. And that'll keep it shut. All right, so I went ahead and took this front piece off. I don't know if you can tell, but that bottom is bowed out a little bit. And that's because I was too lazy and cheap to go buy the right size uh, metal. And so I took two pieces and made it the size I needed. 
and that kind of got it too hot and warped it so I'm gonna try to correct that from and basically what I'm doing is I had it bolted through the back right here and this kept it from going all the way to the box what I did is I cut about I don't know about three eighths of an inch off of it and I took the bolt out and put a nut on it just to put it in this way and then I'm gonna go ahead and just tack the bolt that way it looks a little cleaner it doesn't have any bolts there and I don't need two wrenches to fasten that part and hopefully by cutting three eighths of an inch off the inside I could pull that in a little bit we'll see all right got it welded grinded flush let's go see how it fits all right y'all so it still sticks out just a little bit but I can live with that so I'm thinking what I may do to kind of hide the imperfections here is I got that line X rhino liner raptor liner whatever you want to call it I might go ahead and coat that front part in that and maybe do the same thing on the other side just to give it a matched look so also the fender I just realized that it's poking out about half inch to an inch further out than the other one so I've got to make some adjustments on that as well so I went ahead and mounted the back box back on because I had to make a few modifications and check a few things so initially when I made this the, the exhaust was a little too close it wasn't touching but it was close and when I hit bumps the the pipe would hit that or certain times if the motor was idling low or high it would uh you know rattle make some noise back there so what I did is I got it spaced about a quarter an inch maybe three-eighths of an inch and I put this u-bolt with these uh, spacers like this and I'll go ahead and start it up So that's what it looks like on the inside for now i'm going to go ahead and cut these short to where they're not you know interfering too much with anything so this box here i'm going to be keeping my jack in and maybe some jack stands some blocks and my impact to change this would be my tire changing center so there we go all right guys i'm on the driver's side here about to get ready to build this box so this box is going to hold the gas cans obviously and if you notice it the fill for the truck the filler neck is right there uh, I chose to just keep it like that out of sight out of mind I didn't want to have to mount anything right here or put a hole through the bed or anything like that but as you can see if we were stranded on the side of the road if we ran out of gas It'd be kind of difficult to pour this into that without putting a hole up here so i ended up picking up this little battery operated pump from track supply for like 40 45 dollars i don't remember what it was but we're going to test that out to see if that'll work because we'll have spare gas but we need the a way to get it into the tank so we'll, i'm gonna see how good that works also, if you notice the little platform that the uh, gas can sit on, I'm going to be recycling that from the trailer setup that we had previously. Uh, I had two of them, and what it was, it, it just held the, the blower rack uh, on the trailer. And I had a, a blower rack on each side, and it was just a piece of wood that was mounted. And I, I've been hanging on to it to see if I could use it for something. And I was like, I wonder if those three gas cans will fit up in there. I mean damn it fits perfect so all I got to do is basically come all the way up on the side and mount up here and go up on that side and I'm gonna do a little back on it too just to kind of hold all the gas cans in place and I'm probably just gonna put this expanded metal on the bottom because it's not gonna be a sealed box 
it's just going to be a place where I can store my gas cans. But it's going to have a, it's going to look just like the other side, you know, with the fold down door, skirted bed. So I got the gas can sitting on this bucket to kind of simulate where it would be when the door of the box opens. I'll be able to set this gas can on here and then stick the pump in, hose is going in. We're gonna test it out and see if it'll fill it up and see how long it'll take. Go for it. And she's pumping. We dripping a little. Right Where are we here. dripping? Oh, okay, I might have to tighten this up. So unfortunately, we couldn't get it to stop dripping. I don't know why. That's kind of a bummer. Now, obviously, we're not gonna use this on a regular basis. This is just for emergencies. And is it empty? Uh, we're, we're almost, yeah, we're empty. All right, so we're gonna try it again. This thing is full. It's a two gallon can. I'm gonna see how long it takes to transfer it. Go ahead. So we got a little bit of a leak right here. I feel like it only did it once. So I'm gonna try to figure that out. Just wanna make sure that, yeah, make sure that hose doesn't pop out. But it, as you can see, it's flowing pretty dang fast. I go, hey Bubba, <laughs> I'm flowing. <laughs> Like a freaking river around flowing. <laughs> and it's, oh, I was about to say, and it's done. Oh, well, I gotta <laughs> drop it down. Okay. That's fast. Yeah, it's like less than a minute so far. I'm at the bottom of the tank now. That's cool. That's quick enough for me. So, I'm gonna show y'all what I'm keeping in this box here. Went ahead and added my chain. I got a couple of blocks in case I wanna back something up and I just need a little bit extra. I have some tarps in case I want the situation is muddy and I gotta lay it out or gotta leak clean up or something. I got my tire inflator that works with my Ryobi stuff. Got a breaker bar, half inch drive. I've got a bunch of tools in a bag, mainly my impact and impact sockets and batteries and such. Then I got my jack stands my jack and the arm for the jack. I ended up just leaving those bolts that were sticking up because what it did is it just elevated this up and I could just put that underneath. Uh, that's pretty much it. So I haven't tested it for water or anything, you know, like water getting in it. I'm not too worried about it. Like they have a few little gaps here and there. I'm not really worried about this stuff getting wet. I'm sure a little bit's going to build up down there. I'll keep an eye on it, you know, keep it dry, touch up the rust every so often, but that's going to be fun. All right, y'all, so I got this part cut out. This is the where the gas cans are going to go, and I'm cutting out the door opening. I have the sides cut completely through and the bottom, but before I cut the top, I'm going to go ahead and weld my hinges in place, three of them, and all they are is these little things here, they fit into each other, you weld on this side and then on that side and it becomes a hinge. So I got it pinched down with these little clamps to where it's nice and even, because if it's not even and you weld these slightly crooked and you go to open it, 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 it doesn't work right, it puts it in a bond and wants to break the welds off. So I'm going to do my best to keep these straight and try to weld that. And after that, I'll cut my top out and try it out. All right, so I got them welded on. One, one thing you have to remember when welding these on, if you don't want them to slide off after you open it, you got to weld one of them backwards. And what I'm saying is like you weld here, 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 but one of them you want to weld this way. That way when it opens up, 
you can't slide it off. Now, if you want it to do that, you can, but the only problem with that is if you don't have it perfectly true, every time you open and close this thing, it's gonna wanna work its way off. And once it gets off, it's real hard to get back on with these small hinges here. So that's why I want mine fixed. I don't want it to be able to come on and off. And plus, I don't have very much tolerance at all here. So if it starts moving just a little bit, it's not gonna wanna close right. So that's why I did that. I learned that on the other boxes. But 